Decades ago, E.T. was the movie in the theaters at the time. The first issue of USA Today was published, and Michael Jackson's thriller was topping the charts across our country. But also in 1982, inflation was on the rise. Last month's prices at the grocery store look a lot like they did back then, by the way. Bacon prices are up nearly 19% from a year ago. Men's coats and suits, 11%. Even renting a car will cost you 36% more into this new year. When we pull up to the pump or head down the grocery aisle, we all notice one thing, prices are on the rise. So for every $100 you make, say uh, in your weekly uh, paycheck, you're effectively losing $7 over that year. Last month, inflation jumped at its fastest pace in nearly 40 years, 7%. And that spike is busting the family budget. Food in general has gone up around 6%, 6.5%, I should say, over the year. And when you compare that to, say, going out to eat, going out to eat is also going up by about 6% as well. For most of last year, headlines were dominated by increased spending on goods, the strain on supply chains, even the shortage of computer chips for cars, all which have contributed to this rise in inflation. So you have a lot of dollars chasing fewer goods. That's going to push prices up. The Federal Reserve Bank is looking to tamper down on inflation with increasing interest rates, which is a way for policymakers to slow down the economy. Think of uh, the difference between uh, slowing your car down slowly by pushing your foot on the brake versus doing uh, both feet on the brake, right? It's a sudden stop. You don't want the sudden stop. We do have this demand growing. Dr. Fernandez says even though it will push inflation in the right direction, the changes won't be immediate. You may have to live with a little bit of inflation to keep some growth going. 